Back underway. Now for 141, Kevin Jack from NC State is your green wrestler. Bryce Meredith, the senior from Wyoming, is your red. Give you a few of the particulars on these guys. Jack, a two-time NCAA All-American, three-time NCAA qualifier. Bryce, two-time NCAA qualifier, and was twice an All-American. Not only that, but Meredith was a finalist as well. And, uh, you know, I can tell you this right now, and, and, I, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I really, really like both of these guys. I've been watching them the last three years at the NCAAs, and I became fans of both these guys. To see them put it on the line against each other, I'm kind of excited myself. Uh, even doing the match, I'm like almost a fan right now. Meredith is so <laughs> athletic. He goes after everybody. You know, he, he got to the finals a couple of years ago. He placed last year, had some great matches. Then you look at a guy like Kevin Jack. Kevin Jack places as a sophomore, doesn't place, or places as a freshman, doesn't place as a sophomore, places as a junior, becomes a two-timer. Here's in the senior campaign. I'm sure he wants to make a run at winning the national title. Both of these guys will be in contention. And once again, Keith, you could be looking at what we're going to be looking at in March in the NCAA Championship Finals. And to say something else special about Bryce Meredith, you know, coming from uh, Wyoming, he's a cowboy, only the seventh Wyoming wrestler to be a part of the NWCA All-Star Classic. So pretty impressive there as well. We continue to tell you how important this event is that we're covering right now. Uh, it it's special. It's really special to be here. Well, you know, also, too, um, if you look at it, you know, he transferred, Meredith transferred from NC State. Yep. So these guys are, I don't know if there's bad blood, I don't know if they respect each other, I don't know what's going on, but I can tell you this, these guys are both going to go at each other, and they both want to take each other out. Yeah, you'd imagine they know each other. Uh, Meredith, Central High School in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Jack from Danbury, Connecticut, went to Danbury High School. Kevin Jack is ranked seventh in NC State history with his 92 career wins. And while it would be a tall task to get 30 more this year, if he gets 30, he would have the all-time record for most wins at NC State. That's amazing. That's amazing. And it just goes to show you what kind of stellar career he's had already. Even if it ended today, he's a two-time All-American. He has made history, and he's about to make history this year at the school. So, you know, he's, he's done just such a great job. He's, he's one of those kids that keeps his head down, works hard in practice, and he's around somebody that he responds to. A lot of times, you could have a great athlete with great attributes, a great technique, but they go to a program where they just can't get it out of them. Papalizio had, has gotten every single ounce of athleticism and talent out of Kevin Jack, and this is this is the payoff. This is the senior year. This is the payoff. This is where he can put it all together and win that NCAA title for NC State. Meredith starts on the bottom. Near escape, still no. Oh, nice. Switch, re-switch, switch, re-switch. Re These guys are so talented, and they're chain wrestlers. There's the one point for Meredith. Oh! And was that a revert? I can't tell from my angle. And a quick two. So a quick that, two right back at you from Kevin Jack. That was a little weird. He thought, you know what? Meredith got his point. Probably wasn't so sure he got awarded that point. But Jack did what he was supposed to do. He went immediately in the attack, and he finished that takedown. And now he's up 2-1. It's like any other sport. Play through to the whistle. Yep. Oh, this could be this could be a reversal for Meredith. This is, it is. Wow, look at that. This is back and forth. I knew this would be this way. I knew it would be a back and forth match. Had to watch out for his head. So Meredith gets those two points. He goes up 3-2. And it will be Jack on the bottom. A little bit of a standstill. Jack nice. escapes. Nice little changeover, quick changeover, and he got out. Meredith concedes the one point. Here we are, we're knotted up, 3-3. Three, three. We had spoken about this early before the telecast started, about how these guys were very evenly matched. Yeah, this was one of the matches you were looking forward to. As we had arrived to Princeton, you had said, Keith, this one, mark it down. Yes. 
So far, you're right. 25 seconds. Nick, the wrestlers tired at this moment, catching their breath, or once again looking for their spot? I think you don't want, you, it's the second period. I think if somebody's gonna get a little tired, I think it's gonna be next period. But I, oh, nice, nice shot by Jack. Can he finish with eight seconds left? Can he finish? This would be big. And I think he's just gonna wait it out, go into the third period, 3-3. Three, three. Getting back to your question, it's usually gonna be in the third period, this early in the season. But you know what? Knowing these two, these guys have been working out, they've been training, I think they're in good shape. I don't think shape or fatigue is gonna be is become is gonna become a factor in this match. I think it's just gonna who gets who last. Athletic trainer coming out to check on Bryce Meredith. You know, some sports it breaks momentum up. But I think, you know what, in wrestling is one of those few sports is that when you do get that 20, 30 second break, I think it energizes both wrestlers mm. and it gives you that extra pop coming off of the timeout. That's just my personal opinion. Um, you know, uh, I don't think it's a bad thing. I'll take your opinion. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad thing to have 20 seconds break. Right. I mean, you know, hey, listen, especially if you are feeling a little tired. Still tied up at three. Down, Opening one. seconds of the third period. And we're free. So a 4-3 lead for Kevin Jack. So now Meredith down 4-3. Mind frame is what? Mind frame is get the takedown as soon as possible. Don't wait, right? Nice shot, nice takedown. There it is. Beautiful shot by Meredith. That's why Meredith, and he's got that wrist. That's why Meredith is so dangerous. He is very explosive. He can score right away, very quickly, and he can score in bunches, which is dangerous. And that's why he beats a lot of guys, because he can score in bunches. So he's oh, up 5-4. Nice, nice, oh, that was a nice switch. Nice switch by wow. Jack. And he reverses him. This is impressive action. Jack has gone back up 6-5. Oh, boy, look at this. Meredith just reverses him again. Woo! This is, this is an exciting match, Keith. This is big. This is match of the day thus far. 7-6 in favor of Meredith with 25 seconds to go in the final period. Let me tell you, I wouldn't be surprised if Meredith sits on this lead and holds him and just kind of rides him and doesn't try to do something. I can see this official banging him for another caution and giving him a point and putting it to overtime. I think this match deserves to be in overtime if Meredith doesn't work. It's hanging right here. He has to be very, very careful. He's already got a caution. Next one's a point. 15 seconds. Rolls him. And two points. Kevin Jack gets the two points with five seconds to go. Wow. Whoa. I cannot believe this. Kevin Jack is unbelievable. He comes back. He's down with tw less than 20 seconds. Meredith needs an escape in five seconds. He can do it. If anybody can do it, he can Here do it. Here we go. Two and one. Wow. We'll wait for the official. And yes, it is a victory for Kevin Jack, eight to seven. That is a big win for Kevin Jack. We'll have Seth Gross from South Dakota State and Steven Michich from Michigan. Gross will be your green wrestler, twice an NCAA qualifier, NCAA finals, NCAA All-American, Big 12 Conference champ. Michich, All-American, academic All-Big Ten. Expectations on this match, Nick? Yo, this is gonna be a good one too. Both of these wrestlers are very evenly matched. Even though Gross on paper, you know, he's a, he's an NCAA finalist, an All-American. You know, you have right across the map from you an All-American, a guy that's not gonna be intimidated. You just saw in the last match, these guys don't go out there thinking they're gonna lose, doesn't matter who they're wrestling. So you have to go out there, you have to be sharp, and you have to stay focused at every second of every period. Mitchich ended up fourth at the NCAAs, going five and two. Spent his first season in college at Northwestern. He was 19 and three as a freshman there. 
and he could have very easily placed, you know, you know, he, he basically placed as a freshman. Doesn't matter where he was, you know, he went 19 and three, you know, at Northwestern, but you know, here, here's Gross with that leg up high. And truthfully, Nick, once you get into the NCAA tournament, it's the best of the best there as well. And sometimes you are win within centimeters of either being a finalist or losing in one of the early rounds. It's amazing because, you know, you, oh, yeah, made it to the NCAA. He was a qualifier, people say. He was a qualifier. Well, you might have anywhere from 30 to 36 guys in a weight class. And I can tell you right now, a majority of those guys can win it. Any one yeah. of them can win it. And you're, there, there's no easy outs there. You know, you go in there and you say, oh, this guy's at 27 and 7. He's got seven losses. But you start looking at you start looking at his record and you realize that three of those matches were against NCAA All-Americans. Two of them were against guys that, uh, you know, were on the bubble in the blood round. You know, you really have to go there. That's a, that's a typical tournament. You have to go one at a time. Uh -huh. You can't look ahead. You look ahead, you're done in that tournament. Speaking of ahead, Gross leads 2-0. Three-time state champ from Apple Valley, Minnesota. Escape point, so Mitchich is on the board. Quick shot, misses. Thirty seconds. In deep on that arm, pushed right back away. Mijic tried to get that throw by, that shrug by, when he got in on that front headlock. Explain that. Well, when you get in on that front headlock, you know you want to whip that guy. You want to wind him up and just whip him like you're almost bowling somebody's head and try to get behind. But a lot of these guys know that move. They know it's coming. So you know sometimes you can get it real quick. You know you shrug it and those guys give you that five six inches. That's all you need at this level and you can get behind and have a nice little go behind. Mitchich won the toss. Chooses bottom. Mitch Trailing two one. Mitchich gets out in, in eight seconds and it's uh, you know it's two two. Yeah. Still not out. Still a 2-1 lead for Gross. Gross has that leg inside. If he gets that side headlock, well, he took it out. But he could have got that nice little Merkel. The ride is accumulating. Yes. It's another 20 seconds. It doesn't matter what happens. He's got that point locked down. Right. And he knows it. Guys like this, I mean, they're very, oh, they're very smart, tactical. Right? Very tactical guys. They know how to plan it out. They know how to plan out a match. And uh, and they, they're just so good at that, you know? And they're going to win matches one by a point or two, but they're going to win, and they're going to win a lot. And they're not going to give up. You know, they're not gonna they're not gonna lose on mental errors. Now fifty-five seconds to go in the second period. Let's play to that point, Nick. You know, you wrestled at the highest level. How often as a wrestler, while you're preparing for matches, you're going through your week, you're practicing, are you working on specific situations or are you working on specific moves? It depends. It depends if you're wrestling in a, in, a, in a tournament where you know you're gonna have a lot of guys here. You're just practicing your moves, you're getting better. For me personally, I wanted to get better at what I did. I wanted to create more offense, more opportunities for myself. So, you know, if I had a good single leg or I had a good knee pull, I wanted to work on three or four different ways to get into that knee pull, not just the same setup every time. Um, if you're going in against one guy in, in a dual knee, you know a guy is really good on the mat or he's good on his feet. You're going to work on defending his double leg. You're going to work on defending maybe his leg ride on top or his cheap tilt. So you're going to work on situations during the week on a, maybe on a dual meet to prepare for that. But on tournaments, a little different. You really want to work on what you do best. A 3-1 advantage for Seth Gross as we move into the third period.
And it looks like Michic is going to just let him free. He's going to cut him. He's going to cut him, wants to go on his feet. That's where he feels more, more, most comfortable. Wants to get a couple of takedowns right here. It's going to take a couple of takedowns to get, to get this tied up. So Michic better do something now. Better work hard. The sophomore from Michigan down 4-1. Micic in a bad situation. The official will blow the whistle. We'll get a restart. I feel like Gross has been very methodical in this match. He's definitely initiating some aggressiveness, but to my eye, looks like Gross is being pretty careful as well. He does not want to make a mistake. No doubt about it. He definitely has that probably in his mindset. He's, you know, but I can tell you when you're in the flow of the match and when you're wrestling and you're going at it, I don't think you're consciously thinking, oh, I'm not going to do this because I might get into trouble. You're just trying to get out of the situation you're involved with and try to score out of there. But, you know, listen, going into it in a neutral position, yeah, you are thinking, you are thinking that, that way. Michi just looked up. Had a little bit of a, uh, a little grimace on his face as he looked towards the clock and the score. As we near in now on 30 seconds. You know, you're going up against Gross. You know, Micic is going up against Gross, a national runner-up. So he knows, he knows in his head, hey, listen, it's not going to be easy. And he takes another beautiful, beautiful takedown. Picture perfect. That was textbook right there, the way Gross made that takedown. And now he takes him completely out of the match. That was great. That's what guys like Gross do. They wait till you open up to try to take him down, and then they capitalize. Heard a whistle, and the two wrestlers actually stopped, but it was on the other mat. And that will finalize things as Seth Gross takes it 7-1 to one as he knocks off Steven Micic. So the junior from South Dakota State gets the victory at 133. Back here at Jadwin Gym, it'll be Frank Matias and Mike Machiavello. Matty Ace from U UPenn, a philosophy, politics, and economics major, qualifier at the NCAA tournament last year. Machiavello is our green wrestler, a senior from NC State. Matty Ace tried to shoot, fixes the headgear. Three-time ACA, ACC academic All-American also. Yeah. For Machiavello, great. Well, I mean, you know, he's, he does only does it on the mat, but he does it in the classroom. I was just gonna say, you love when you see these athletes also, you know, being excellent or excelling in the classroom as well. Nice little attempt at a single leg. Oh, nice shot. Well defended by Matty Ace off of Machiavello's shot. Forty seconds to go. We're at 197. Matty Ace and Machiavello. Neither wrestler making a a move as of yet. Little shot, and warded off, scoreless first. Solid, solid first period for both wrestlers. Machiavello, he goes down. Yep. So it will be Matty Ace's choice in the third period. Which you'd rather, right? You know what, it's 0-0. I would have taken down in the first period to score first, but uh, you know, maybe Matty Ace doesn't think this is going to overtime because that would come out on an ultimate rideout. So gotcha. you would get your choice. But 
you know, it is, hey, listen, it's an all-star match. You know, you're going to do things, you're going to wing and sling, and you're going to try to go in your best position. Now, is that something that you would think about in an all-star, like a preseason event like this, where you're going to try something now that you may be able to utilize a little bit later in your season? You can, and, you know, I'm sure guys do that. But at the same time, <laughs> these guys have egos also. Oh, yeah. So they don't want to do, they'd rather <laughs> practice this stuff in the room. They would rather do these things, you know, in the room, go through the little aches and pains, and maybe something not working. But when you get to this stage, you know, you don't want to try something for the first time, especially <laughs> against the guys that are across from you. And in front of all these fans. And in front, Exactly, in this big crowd. But, you know, some guys are, you know, they're wing and sling guys. They go after it, and they just do what they need to do. Um, but uh, I would say it's probably the, uh, the first thing I said. Machiavello does have the first point of the day. He's up one nothing. 60 seconds to go in the second. You get the feeling... Nick, that the fans are kind of waiting for a wow moment early. You know, they really are. And, and you know, there, trust me, there will be fireworks. There will be some fireworks and there will be some sparks here. It's just that these first couple of matches, you know, these, these are very evenly matched guys. You know, a lot of times when you get guys together at this level, Keith, you know, people want just big moves and big points and everything else. But they don't understand. It's a matter of inches. It's a matter of seconds. It's a matter of really outsmarting a guy possibly once in a whole match and getting that takedown. Matty Ace will try to escape, get that one point if he can. He does. Now we're tied up at one. So here we go. Knotted up at one. Little shot, not much going on. Nick, what are you seeing? You know, it, like I said, like I mentioned, these guys are pretty evenly matched. Somebody has to really get a nice setup. Listen, they've been wrestling for two and a half periods so far, so they, they've, they've felt each other out. Now it's pulling the trigger. Third period winding down as we near in on 60 seconds. Still tied up at one. You're watching the 52nd annual NWCA All-Star Classic. Ooh, nice shot on that single. Ken Machiavello, oh, Machiavello has to get him down to the mat to get two points. Can he do it? He's got to put that leg in. If he puts that leg in, if he slips that leg in, he's got his two. That's two points. Got it. So the senior from NC State now has a two-point advantage with less than 30 seconds to go. Seen a lot of NC State guys in here. Papalizio is doing a great job with that program. He was at Binghamton. Now he's at NC State. You know, we got Renda winning. We got, uh, you know, we got another guy here, uh, uh, Machiavello, in this match, which he just got an escape. Now, he better be careful right here. Oh, and he almost gets a go behind. Three Maybe seconds left. Seconds. Can he hold on? Can he hold on? And he does. Time called. Wow. What an ending. What a finish. Did you see that? I'm, I'm, I was just assuming, which I shouldn't do, that it was over with five seconds left, and Matty Ace almost came back. So Machiavello gets the victory at 197. The senior from NC State held off Matty Ace.